How's it going everyone? It's me, it's Conchinsula, and welcome to another Pokemon Go video. So, Niantic gave the details for the next event that will follow Fashion Week, and my goodness, it is underwhelming. This event is going to be the Evolving Stars event. I was really hoping Niantic would do something interesting with this event, but it looks like they are missing the mark. However, there are a very small number of silver linings with this event, and I did want to point them out. I'm going to be talking about all of this in today's video, so let's roll the intro and get right into it. Okay, so yesterday I uploaded a video going over all of the content that will be happening in the month of October, and one of those pieces of content was going to be this Evolving Stars event. We didn't have any info on this event at the time, so players were speculating what the event would entail. Well, we finally got that info, and it's not looking good. The sole purpose of this event is to further the Season of Light special research. The big selling point for this particular event is going to be the evolution of the Pokemon Cosmog, as you will be able to evolve it into Cosmoem during this event. According to Niantic, you will be able to evolve your Cosmog with 25 candy, which I'm assuming will be awarded by the special research story. One thing they did point out, which I can see as a positive, is that the Cosmog that we got at the beginning of this season is not going to be the only one we can get. So if your Cosmog has low IVs, don't worry about it because you won't be stuck with it as your only Cosmog, at least for now. Next up, there is going to be a Mega Gyarados raid day while this event is going on. It is going to happen on Saturday, October 8th from 2 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Like every other raid day, you can spin gems for up to 5 free raid passes, and the featured raid boss is going to be Mega Gyarados. If you still don't have enough Mega Energy for this Mega Evolution, then this will be a great opportunity to get it. But if you would rather spend your free raid passes on something more worthwhile, then look for Yveltal because that will be in 5 star raids. Honestly, I'm pretty disappointed by this raid day. I know there's a lot of trainers who still don't have enough energy for Mega Gyarados, but they could have had any other Pokemon and it would have been more exciting. Gyarados is one of the oldest shinies in the game, so it's going to be hard to find a trainer that doesn't have it by now. It's also a bit of a missed opportunity, as they could have had a raid boss that is better themed around evolutions. Heck, I would have even liked Eevee as the raid boss. Not only will we get a chance at high IV shiny Eevees, but it would have been soloable as well. Mega Gyarados, not as exciting. But yeah, regardless, this is an opportunity for those out there who still don't have the energy for this Mega Evolution. So I digress, this could be great for some people out there. Next, let's go over the wild spawns, because there are a handful of Pokemon that will be spawning during this event that are actually decent, while the rest are pretty lame. In the wild, you will see an increased number of Kakuna, Pidgeotto, Poliwhirl, Kadabra, Haunter, Rhyhorn, Seedra, Scyther, Eevee, Swinub, Ralts, Duskull, Tynemo, Litwick, and Helioptile. So these wild spawns are good for only two things, Stardust and XL Candy. I do like that a good number of the common spawns are going to be pre-evolved Pokemon, so this will be a great way to boost up your Stardust count. There's also a good opportunity to collect XL candy for Pokemon like Alkazam, Poliwrath, and Gengar. Since their first stage evolutions will be all over the wild, you will be able to stock up on XL candy for these Pokemon during this event. But yeah, aside from this, there's nothing special about these spawns. There's no new shiny, no new Pokedex entry, and a very small number of these evolve into anything meta within the Go Battle League. Simply put, there's just nothing to be excited about with these wild spawns, and I feel like I would much rather have the non-event spawns instead. Now let's get into what will be appearing in raid battles, and yeah, it couldn't get any worse for this event. In 1 star raids, you will possibly see Slowpoke, Onix, Scyther, Porygon, and Sunkern. There's nothing special about any of these, except maybe Onix, and I can't say these raids are worth your raid passes. Now in 3 star raids, you will possibly get Magneton, Rhydon, Togetic, and Piloswine. Again, nothing to be excited about, so save your raid passes. In 5 star raids, you will get Yveltal during the first half of this event, and then Xerneas for the latter half. In Mega Evolution raids, you will encounter Mega Manetric during the first half, and Mega Lopunny during the second half. So yeah, nothing too excited with the wild spawns, raids, or anything else. There's no bonuses, no special wild spawn, or even a good reason to go out and explore. 
I just feel like everything with this event is a big miss, and I really hope Niantic makes up for it with the latter events in October. Now, I stated at the top of this video that there are a few silver linings with this event, and I do think these are some things to not ignore. Like I mentioned earlier, this is basically going to be a Stardust farming event, as long as those pre-evolved Pokemon spawn frequently. I also like the fact that this event is not overly packed with content. You can save your energy for the Festival of Lights and Halloween events, which will likely be the best events of this year. I mean, I would have preferred there be no event at all, as the non-event wild spawns have been pretty good. It is what it is, I guess we just have to make good on this situation. At the very least, I hope the bundle boxes will be good for once. That would most certainly save the event for sure. Now, these are not the only things that could be seen as a positive when it comes to this event. We will be getting the Evolution Cup during this event, and that could actually be some fun gameplay for battlers. I do know that this particular cup is generating some buzz, mainly because the list of eligible Pokemon are actually quite spicy. I myself am looking forward to it, because I'm really struggling right now with the Ultra League, and it would be really nice to go back to some great league battles again. We'll also be getting some unique field research tasks and a collection challenge that will reward evolution items. So this could be a great opportunity for you to stock up on Anuva Stones for Litwick Community Day, assuming that will be one of the items featured as a reward. But yeah, unfortunately, this event is not anything special, and I do think Niantic had some really big missed opportunities with it. Maybe this could be a good time to take a break from the game so that you are ready for the Halloween event. That is probably the one you will want to focus on, so make sure you are mentally well prepared. But in any case, that's going to be it for this video. Now I would love to know your thoughts. Is there something really good about this event that I completely missed? Or are you as disappointed as I am? Let me know below in the comment section and let's have a great discussion. And if you ended up enjoying this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on one of our upload videos. And I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support my channel in any way, big or small, then be sure to check out the links in the description below. For all my patrons, they get a permanent spot on my in-game friends list. So if you want to interact with me in some way, like with remote raids, then do consider becoming a patron on my Patreon. But yeah, that's going to be it. I'm Count Insula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.